There is a very important project at the heart of the Norton House, and that is High Speed 2. And I think if the Conservative government or a future Conservative leader kills off High Speed 2, then that would be an enormous betrayal of the north of England. Uh, it needs to go alongside the railway lines across the north, the east-west lines. But, you know, successful governments build things. They build Crossrail, they build Canary Wharf, they build the M25. Unsuccessful governments kill projects. And if the Conservatives kill off High Speed 2, then I think they'll face electoral oblivion in this part of the country, and rightly so. It was nearly two years ago that you described Theresa May as a dead woman walking, and that was immediately after that snap election. You said that you thought she would be forced to resign almost immediately, and yet we're here nearly two years on, and she's still going. You called that wrong, didn't you? Well, I, my observation was that she'd lost her majority in the general election she called, and she would never regain it, and she would be a lame duck prime minister. And I, I'm afraid that has been borne out by events. Eventually, the party has to confront the truth, which is it needs a new leader, it needs a new agenda, it needs to win over uh, supporters who have disappeared from it, uh, and it needs to make an appeal to urban, metropolitan Britain who, that have currently turned their back on conservatism. And if that's the case, if that continues to be the trend, then there won't be a Conservative government for much longer. Why do you think she's hanging on in there? Do you think it's because she's trying to protect her own legacy or is she trying to govern in the national interest? I mean, what do you think it is? Well, I think Theresa May, obviously, really wants to deliver her Brexit deal. But she has not got the numbers to do that. And all she's got left is hoping that Jeremy Corbyn, a person who she every day says is unfit for national office, to come to her rescue to keep her in national office. And that is not, in my mind, a successful plan for a Prime Minister. You think she I think, should stand down Well, I, I, I don't know how much longer the Conservative Party will give her, but I f would find it extremely odd if we got to the Conservative Party conference and um, there was still Theresa May giving the leader's speech. I think we are going to know in the next couple of weeks whether there's any prospect of a deal between Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May and whether the Labour Party is going to rescue yeah. her premiership. Um, once it's clear that they're not going to rescue the premiership, I don't really see the point of... Uh, going on. Yeah. And there aren't Brexit negotiations. It's just that Theresa May can't and the government don't want to break off the talks because that would be the admission that they have run out of any options. So. You, you don't think it's going to happen. I heard that you had said to someone, why would a Corbyn uh, who wants to be in government save a drowning Prime Minister? Why would you throw her a lifeline? Isn't that your view? But well, he I, won't do that. Look, the incentives on an opposition are to replace the government because you think genuinely you'd do a better job. And so I think any opposition leader would be very hard-pressed to rescue a, a, a dying prime minister. I think there's a point where you have to ask yourself as a political party, how many more elections are we going to lose? So we lost the majority in 2017. We got hammered in the local elections uh, you know, earlier this month. And now we've got these European elections where it's quite possible that the Conservative Party, for the first time in its long and distinguished history, is going to come fourth in a national poll. And essentially there's a responsibility on the current members of Parliament uh, and indeed the you know, supporters in the country to do something about that. And it is within their hands. You, know, there's, you, you can't just say it's all beyond my control if you're a member of the Cabinet. You have a responsibility. And I, as it happens... If I was giving them any advice, I would suggest to them individually, if they want to lead, fortune favours the brave in these uh, leadership contests. Just one other thing, if we zoom out on you and where the country's at in terms of both austerity and then the Brexit uh, referendum on the back of it, I was wondering whether it made you feel a bit uncomfortable or queasy that you played such a high-stakes game while running the country and that backfired and it's caused all this chaos and division. I mean, if, I were, if it were me, I would, I think, feel quite bad about that. Well, I do feel bad about the referendum. I mean, I didn't want a referendum, but I was part of a team and we agreed to have a referendum and indeed it was widely supported and supported by across the different political parties and we went and had a referendum, but I didn't want to have a referendum and then I did everything I could 
uh, campaigned with everything I had to try and persuade Britain to stay in the EU, but of course I feel a responsibility for that.